Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it is a great honor for me to open uh, this roundtable discussion with this year's uh, Dan David Prize laureates for the past time dimension, history and memory. Uh, we have uh, Professor Saul, or perhaps uh, Shaul Fedlander, Mr. Pianora, Mr. Krzysztof Kisiewski. And uh, before moving on with the uh, round table, I would like to invite, uh, it will not be a young sister this time, it will be the rector of the university, Professor Ron Schall, uh, who will greet us all. I was going to say that I'm not a Yal Zisser. Yal Zisser here, and I don't know how he managed to... Uh, anyway, I'm uh, very glad uh, to be here uh, today as the rector of Tel Aviv University and to greet you, uh, the laureates and the prize winner of the um, past uh, time uh, dimension, the, uh, Dan David, and also we've got the honor to have uh, Professor Itamar Rabinovich, the former president and the chair of the committee uh, with us. And uh, I think uh, after yesterday, and it was a very nice, I thought, uh, ceremony and introduction of the people, I would not do it, the honorees. I'll just say that um, uh, what um, we really, uh, what I liked about this uh, prize anyway, this time that in fact there was a um, tightest tie and common denominator, I think, between the three uh, phases, the past, the present, and the, the future, the three dimensions, the whole question of mind and memory. And uh, it seems to me that um, there is a sort of an uh, almost uh, no man's land or sort of a gray area between history and memory. And uh, in fact, um, one should really excavate and explore this uh, no man's land or whatever one wants to call it uh, between these two uh, themes and uh, terms. Um, if um, Professor Shaul Friedlander called the uh, past forgotten uh, country yesterday, I think this is the term which you used and I took it into a serious uh, notice. The question is whether we couldn't really say that the territory of the memory um, has um, only relatively recently been discovered. I might be wrong, but I think mo much more work should be, do should be done on the question of memory which is uh, relatively recent uh, compared to other facets we historians have uh, looked into. Um, if I mention the uh, show, I just want to tell him and the rest that we still regard as a member of the Department of History in this university, wherever you go. And when we uh, count the uh, Israel prizes that the department has managed to um, and gain, I think it's a uh, six in number, which is really unprecedented, we cannot let you go. You see, we have it. <laughs> now, um, one more thing that uh, I wanted to mention is, of course, that you are, if I'm not mistaken, the founder of the journal History and Memory, uh, under the uh, foundation of Bissell, and this uh, goes on. And I think this journal has a um, fantastic uh, name throughout the world, and the name of this uh, session today and also, uh, of course, used in the uh, ceremony, um, main theme, uh, history and memory, is something quite apparent and thing that we are uh, quite um, um, apparent there and quite um, known uh, in this um, uh, theme. And the, the journal is doing very well. Now, if I mention the journal, I just want to say that the rationale behind this journal, and here allow me to uh, quote, uh, part of the rationale, I think, which uh, uh, was actually written by the uh, founders of the uh, journal, was to <coughs> explore the manifold ways in which the past shapes the present and is being, is being shaped by uh, present perception. Uh, formation of historical consciousness and collective memory is yet just another task the journal took upon itself. 
So, in fact, I think uh, it is very important to mention this project that we have, and, of course, young members of the department have taken over uh, from Shaul this uh, task. Uh, in Israel, naturally, um, there is a strong um, interest in uh, exploring the legacies of Nazism, Holocaust, and the impact on the contemporary imagination. And recently, we have moved more fiercely, I think, into looking into um, other perspectives and questions related to our recent past, Israel's recent past. And this is not an easy task. It's very emotionally loaded, but we'll have to combat with this and try to struggle. Um, I just want to mention that I um, had the privilege of being, uh, for 10 years, a member of the Ministry of Education's um, committee, curriculum, history curriculum committee, uh, 10 years, and five of which I was chair. And I must tell you that sometimes my uh, study seemed like a sort of operation room in sort of a brigade, infantry brigade in the war, because many elements in our society were interested in the curriculum. I'm talking about Knesset members, I'm talking about journalists, I'm talking members of the public, and we were very uh, often attacked, whatever, whatever we decided to do, whether it was what, what we call the right or the wing, uh, or the right wing or the left, and very often I was called to uh, Parliament uh, to actually give a report as to what do we do and what damage we create and in what doses. So, um, uh, and in fact, the highlight, I would say in the negative sense of the word, was that a certain um, a textbook was actually shredded by the ministry after very fierce criticism because they did not like um, some of the descriptions concerning the war of independence. And this was really something quite unprecedented. Um, now, another thing which I want to mention there was this idea, which I didn't like all in all, but it, again, perhaps there was a certain agreement between the opposition and the coalition. By the way, this uh, Knesset committee, both the coalition and uh, the opposition, agreed the book uh, had to be shredded, except very few members of parliament. Now, um, there was another thing which I decided to mention here today. The ministry decided to um, uh, issue, or rather print, a booklet with 100 terms, which every student should know. I mean, historical and other terms, as if it was a part of the Bible. Of course, there were many discussions and disagreements. Just imagine if we sit here and each one of us has to contribute a term or two. But they had no problem. They simply published this uh, booklet, and each student had uh, to actually <coughs> recite and remember each of the 100 terms. I've got this booklet and it's very interesting. But one uh, episode which I want to tell you, now it's less of a secret, it's the, the widow of uh, Eli HaKohen, who was hanged in Damascus, uh, asked the Prime Minister then, Ariel Sharon, to see her, and she complained, in fact, uh, uh, you know, protested, that her husband's name was not among the 100 uh, terms in that uh, book. And very often people turn uh, straight forward to uh, Ariel Sharon and complain about the committee, our committee, and the way we teach history. So just to let you know that this is something very vivid, very hot, very controversial, and we cannot really resolve the question. So I wish uh, us all a uh, pleasant and intellectually interesting um, session today. And again, I greet you all, the three honorees and the chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Uh, please don't forget to turn off uh, all these uh, mobile phones and other devices that you have. Uh, uh, by the way, my name is uh, Avner Benaymos. Um, I'm from the uh, School of Education of this university, and I'm going to be the moderator of this uh, roundtable. So uh, let me say a few words of uh, introduction to explain the idea 
uh, behind the title of this uh, round table. History and memory between the personal and the public. Uh, well, while there is, a, in, there is a general agreement, I would say, that uh, our identity is based, at least in part, on our memory. There is no agreement about the nature of that memory. If uh, psychologists, uh, beginning with uh, Sigmund Freud, insist on the primacy of uh, individual memory that goes back to our early childhood within the family, sociologists, beginning with Maurice uh, Alvax, emphasize the importance of uh, collective memory, that of our society, which also engulfs us ever since our childhood. Now, what are historians who study the history of memory or who investigate a certain period in the past during which they themselves grew up? What are they to do with this clash of scientific suppositions? Uh, instead of an answer, I would like to quote from the words of another great Jewish historian, besides the two that are sitting at this table, Eric Hobsbawm. He began his book, The Age of Empire, with an autobiographical anecdote concerning the meeting of his parents in 1913 at Alexandria, and then wrote, and I quote, for all of us there is a twilight zone between history and memory between the past as a generalized record which is open to relatively dispassionate inspection and the past as a, as a uh, remembered part of or background to one's own life. For individual human beings this zone stretches from the point where living family traditions or memories begin to the end of infancy when public and private destinies are recognized as inseparable and as mutually defining one another. The length of this zone may vary and so will the obscurity and fuzziness that characterizes it. But there is always such a no man's land of time. It is by far the hardest part of uh, history for historians or anyone else to grasp. End of quote. Uh, well, uh, I think it's, it's perhaps no coincidence that Hobsbawm used as a motto for his book a quote from Pierre Nora's introduction to the first volume of Le Lier de Mémoire, and that Shaul Frindlader included the phrase that had just quoted in the introduction to his volume of collected essays, memory, history, and the extermination of the Jews of Europe. And he mentioned it yesterday, part of it, in his speech. So it should be clear by now that all three historians explored this twilight zone and grappled with this tension between history and memory, between the pers personal and the public, each finding his own solution to the uh, conundrum. So I think we should be uh, thankful to Dan David Price for bringing together under the same roof, three eminent intellectuals, two historians, an artist and social activist, who were personally affected by the upheavals of the 20th century, but also reacted to them in personal, historical, and theoretical writings, and also in theatrical and other artistic productions. We ask them, therefore, to reflect upon the relationship between their own personal experience 
and their work in the domain of history and memory. We will uh, proceed then by listening to the reflections and by giving them the opportunity to respond to each other's presentations and to ask questions. Afterwards, if there is enough time, we will open the floor to questions. We uh, changed a bit the order of the speakers. So the first speaker will be Pierre Noir, who with uh, several hats, a historian of modern France, he was a lecturer at the Parisian School for Advanced Studies in the Social Sciences. As an editor at the prestigious publishing house of Gallimard, he is responsible for two important book series uh, of history and of the human sciences. And he is also the founder and the editor with Marcel Gaucher of one of the most influential French journals in the humanities, Le Debat. But what, uh, what is particularly uh, relevant for the round table theme uh, is his monumental seven volume enterprise, Le Lieu de Mémoire, which he edited and published between 1984 and 1992, and which inaugurated a, a new era in the study of collective memory. I should also mention his involvement with the association Liberty for History, of which he is the president, an association that fights against legislation that concern our interpretation of the past and want to define it once and for all. A member of the French Academy, he received uh, numerous uh, awards and honors, uh, too long to cite them now. Among the books that he edited at Gallimard, I would like to mention the 1987 Essays in Ego History, in which several prominent historians wrote about the relationship uh, between, to quote Noah's words, uh, the history that they wrote and the history that had made them, end of quote. So perhaps we should regard the presentations of today also as sorts of ego history. Please. Well, 